Hello, beautiful people. I hope you're doing well. Just thought I'd drop in with a quick um, short video to show you how I'm putting together a free finance package. I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but I'm just going to give you some little nuggets that works for me, especially when you're new at this. Uh, one of the things that I recommend is that when you do the paperwork that you put it in, uh, I'm going to cover this because I have to protect the client's privacy because I put their name on the top tab and then their loan number at the bottom. Um, one, I put customer copy and I give them that copy after I've done the signing because when I have not done that, then um, they usually start reading the paperwork, which is distracting and it takes from your time. So I usually let them know that I have an exact co duplicate copy to give them at the end of the signing and I put it to one side. So this is their copy, depending on how thick the package is, I'll rubber band it. Also, um, I staple my business card on there and, uh, you know, with my little logo and that way, who knows in the future, if they may need a notary again, um, they can contact me, but I also do the same for the title company that the paperwork's going to. So that way I have a chance to get, get the business direct because they now have my information and I have packaged it nicely for them. I stick it with this inside of the FedEx or UPS folder with a nice paper clip or rubber band to keep everything easy for them. Uh, then I start flagging my stuff. I stick, while I'm printing the second set of paperwork, I start flagging the first set. And so um, I already finished printing everything out. And for example, this company is asking um, for closing instructions. I'm gonna kind of block this out, but closing instruction and it's a list of to-dos. And it's very important that you read that because you wanna see, do they have anything specific? Like for example, they're saying that all these signatures are required by the borrowers to print the full name according to um, the document being acknowledged according to how it's written. That's how they have to sign it on everything. You have to be sure that you tell them the date because I had one client that went to put 2020 <laughs> instead of 2021. And um, so he, thankfully he caught it on time to put the correct date. But um, you want to read through this carefully. I know you want to rush because you want to make that money. But you got to understand that you're providing excellent customer service and how you provide this service is important to whether you'll get hired again, especially when you're new and you're establishing yourself. You want to establish a good relationship and a good reputation from the start. Do everything with integrity. The money will come once you develop a flow, once you've developed your expertise, because you're going to do it so many times that it's going to come naturally to you and you're going to kind of know where to look for things, right? But in the beginning, don't try to overdo things and read everything carefully even if you have to take less signings in the beginning for example they sent this right here um, saying that they want the fedex package not to be sent on a cardboard envelope but on a large pack so the the fedex large pack is plastic remember sometimes it rains and you have to go through transit so they're being very specific that that's what they want and they're saying if i don't do that they're going to reduce my pay by ten dollars right and we don't want that so um, they give you nice little instructions. Sometimes they'll attach notes before the part you sign to tell you, hey, don't forget to look out for the initials in this part because it'll be very small or to collect funds if you need to. Um, so these are my instructions and I, and I go through them. I'm gonna staple them together if I can find my stapler. <laughs> so now as, as I do that, Another thing that I do then is I start flagging my paperwork. I'm going to kind of put this over so that you don't see the full thing because I'm just very into people's privacy. And, I, and you know, it shows a lot of monetary figures and names, addresses, you know. So you want to be very protective of your client's privacy because you, you they are entrusting you with this, right? So confidentiality is of the utmost importance when you're dealing with this type of paperwork but as you could see i'm already flagging things some say sign here this one i put it because they probably have to fill something out specifically there uh and then they might have to sign on a different page so i go tabbing things out so it could go standing out for me um other times you know i buy these on amazon 
and um, see it says please sign and date some of them just say and like these particular ones say sign here see and then I have some that I'm in and then I buy regular stickies like these and I reuse my stickies because <laughs> when I'm when I tell them when the date we sign the paperwork I tell them that I'm gonna go through it a second time in their presence just to be sure we didn't miss any initials or signatures um, as they go signing I go taking these off and putting them to one side and I have a little plastic container where I put them in to reuse them because that's gonna save you money right I think this is like the third time using these same ones and I'm gonna use them till the wheels fall off before I go and grab another one but as you can see I have plenty of them um, also I keep paper clips in case I have to paper clip stuff uh, sometimes they want you to paper clip the check that you're supposed to collect or to staple it sometimes you don't have to collect any money it all depends you have to read through the paperwork um, whenever you see where they have to put their um, their name for example I'm gonna kind of try to clock out this information here so it doesn't show their name just to show you real quick um, over here it's only asking for their signature but it doesn't have a date that means you do not tell them to date it that's where the sign here goes now if it was signing signature and a date then I would put that or I would buy you can also buy some of these little ones and write it on there you know Pick a color that you know is for sign and date and one for sign signature and one for notarize. Like I, I use my little, I write here notarize because then I know I have to put my seal on there. And um, if I have time, I pre-fill only the date that I'm doing the documentation with my name. And then the signature and the stamping part, I do that in front of the client. You are not supposed to do that before. But if you have time to put just the date and your full name then that's going to save you time right um so as you get advanced you could take 20 to 30 minutes doing signings and eventually you can create your flow but give yourself like a two hour gap because things can happen like car accidents your car breaks down you need always tr make sure your tank is full <laughs> um especially if you have to drive a good distance and um like for example, this form here, they have to fill it out. So they're gonna have to fill that part out. So I put a little blue flag because that's something they have to fill out, right? So um, let's see. So. so I go putting them all face down so that I can keep them in order and so now uh, this is a privacy policy from the company and in the privacy policy way at the bottom you see it says initials so both parties are gonna have to initial so I put I took one of these little flags and I wrote initial here or you could buy flags that already say that but the point is that you have to go through each page because that's a very easy part to miss so you want to make sure you catch where it says initial and this is why before you leave you get you tell them to give you a moment to go through the paperwork and then once you leave don't drive too far away find somewhere you know safe that you can pull over take out the paperwork and go through it a third time right the first time is when they're signing the second time is when you're giving a look over and the third time is just to be absolutely certain so you you can turn right back around while you're still close rather than figure it out once you reach especially you have to scan it back and they tell you missed something right that's going to waste your time gas mileage and you have to get back in touch with the people so i would say check it a third time because you want you don't want to get too confident where you you will um forget something so this particular paper i'm holding it up to hide certain information but as you can see it says sign and date so that's what i'm doing now you get the point of what i'm doing as far as tabbing everything right so so i put my notarized flags here i have to do the same thing over here so i'm just writing my information before i continue 
I'm going to show you what I do next. So I flag everything first, then I created a cheat sheet for myself and, and because I'm bilingual, I did it in English and in Spanish. So this, as you can see, I have my little tab in the middle. So this part is the English and this part is the Spanish exactly written in that language. And the very first thing I do is to remind myself to collect a copy of their IDs because when I call them, I introduce myself that I'm the, the notary, my name, my notary business and the company that I'm representing and that, and that I'm confirming our appointment for whatever time. And if they could please have a copy of their ID for me when I come. And because it's COVID season, then I usually ask them the COVID questions, whether they've traveled out of the country uh, within the last 14 days, whether they've been in contact with anybody with COVID in the last 14 days, and if um, they've had any flu-like symptoms. And if they say no, then we proceed. If they say yes, then I have to contact the title company to possibly cancel that appointment, right? Your health and safety comes first as well as your clients. So you check, once you get there, you, you check their ID for validity and to make sure that their name matches their ID. It, it seems like something simple, but it, you really have to check that. Um, there's a lot of fraud out there, right? And you have to cover your butt. Also, I, I pull out my wallet and I show them my ID, uh, excuse me, to let them know that it's me. Um, I wear a face mask, so I always try to keep one in my purse or in my briefcase so that I don't forget. Another day I'm going to do a video as to what's in my notary bag and my briefcase because I carry two things. So that's pretty much what I do, but then I put the most important documents out front because it kind of gives them a nutshell of what they're going to sign which is the HUD settlement statement and it gives a brief, brief description of what that is so when you're new don't be shy to use it let them know you're using it. it's better for you to do that and be like you know what sometimes I forget because there's so many documents they're not going to tell you anything believe me they might not even ask and if they ask you say oh, it's my little cheat sheet so that I know what you know how to explain to you each form that you're signing, like no, the notice of right to cancel says this document allows barrels to cancel the loan within three days from today. That's a very important document. You got to have three copies of that, which prints automatically because they provide it in the packet. One goes to the title company and two goes to the client, but they already have that in their file because you're printing two sets of that, right? So the notice of right to cancel, then there's the truth in lending disclosure statement, the promissory note, which is where where it shows everything they borrowed, right, and a breakdown of it, their escrow disclosure and the deed, and um, the first payment letter. Those are the important ones, and everything else doesn't have to be in the same order, in, in a specific order. So what I do is, for example, if the first one is the HUD settlement statement, I as I'm doing my paperwork, I will take a big sticky note, and I'll put it on the back. So if, let's say that this was the HUD settlement statement next. I will put this here. That way, when I take it out of order to put it on top, then I have it in order to remember that since I took these and put them in that order, that's the order they're gonna go back. That way I return the packages exactly how they sent it to me, unless they have something else specifically so that way as my package is put together for example like this right so as if my package is put together like this and I have all my flags when I see that big big sticky then I know that the first set of documents that I paper clipped that's where the paper clips come in then I could put a little pink sticky or a little yellow sticky and put one, two, three, four, five, whatever. And then I know that's the order that I'm to put them back behind this. So when I take that sticky note off, I know where to slap those paperwork back. Very simple idea, but it works also along with the cheat sheet. And I can do a video about how I put my cheat sheet together another day to show you how that helps me. Um, as you get more familiarized with the documents, you use it less, but it's good to still have it, you know. Um, it's very organized, and they see that you're organized. 
Uh, the next thing that I do is I, of course, have my legal size clipboards. Because uh, like you, you don't know what type of um, table that you're going to sit on. So you want everything to be signed smooth. If the documentation does not say to use red or blue ink, choose one of the two colors depending on your state. Always research your state laws. Um, I usually use black if they don't specify, but I make sure that everything is signed to the same color ink, including my signatures. So I'm going to continue preparing this package. And, and um, I already spoke to the client and I'm doing the timing. So I figured that would give me time to be able to record this short video for you. And if you have any questions, whatever I know, I will be more than happy to help you. As I give you my disclaimer, I'm always out in the field working. And so sometimes I may not get to you right, right away, but I will get back to you. If I don't have the answer, I'll try to find it. If not, you should become an NNA member. They help me a lot when I get stuck with certain documents. They have a hotline, you know, for, for these particular things when you get stuck. If you have nobody else to call, they're there. And I love the NNA. So that is very important as a notary that you become a member of the NNA. It's worth the fees. <laughs> um, so I will go telling you my story about how I founded my company and how I built my website and my logo, uh, how I came up with my business name. But um, right now I'm going to finish putting this package together. And I hope that this helps you in some way. I hope you all have a blessed evening. And why don't you hit like subscribe and hit that follow bell so that you can follow me when I upload more videos. Saying bye to you with my little sticky finger which helps me separate my paperwork and I will show you what's in my notary bag another day which includes these. So blessings to you. Peace and blessings from Saida. Don't follow. Hey, and if you want to share, send that to your email so that you'll have these videos when you need to replay them or come back here and watch it again. Thank you.